What's up, Doc? homestead today is a very windy cold blustery snowy day we've had over a foot of snow and last night I think we had a few more inches so it's been beautiful I've been outside and so now it's time to come and warm by my nice wood-burning wood cook stove I think I'm gonna do a little cooking a little fermenting and so I thought it would be a good time to kind of go over with you guys some things you can do with your carrot peels because I know a lot of you, the obvious would be, of course, putting them in your bone broths and your soups and your stews, making carrot cake or a smoothie. But I'm going to give you two great ideas that you can use your carrot peels with. So stay tuned. You know, peeling carrots is very therapeutic. Who needs to pay for therapy, right? <laughs> Just get home and peel some carrots. A lot of people, carrot is their favorite vegetable. So I want you to leave a comment below if carrots are your favorite vegetable. So today I am going to use a lot of my carrots, I'm going to be making a ferment, a sauerkraut that I use a lot of carrots for, and I'm gonna make roasted carrots for later. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about is what to do with your carrot peels. Now it's really important when you get your carrots, of course, is to wash them very well. So you wanna really kinda, of, you know, rub them down a little bit, get them nice and clean, make sure there's no any dirt or debris on them. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend that everyone do organic carrots because you wanna watch out that pesticide load, you wanna get as many nutrients as you possibly can, and then you don't have to eat as many carrots, right? Because there'll be more nutrient dense. I don't always peel my carrots unless I'm going to use the skin for certain things. The only time that I would peel my carrots is if I'm going to steam them because it does, I think, make it more fibrous, a little more tough steaming wise. Other than that, I would put them in whole once they're cleaned up. I wouldn't worry about skinning them unless I'm going to use the skin for something to peel or not to peel, right? <laughs> so when we're talking about the skin, you are going to be getting a concentrated amount of more vitamin C in the peel than in the rest of the carrot. And you'll be getting a little bit more of vitamin B3, or we call that niacin. But you're still gonna get vitamin C, and you're gonna get your B3, you're gonna still get that throughout the carrot. As well as the inside of the carrot, you're gonna get so many other of your vitamins. You're gonna get your you know, vitamin A, beta carotene, you're gonna be getting um, you know, magnesium and phosphorus, so you're gonna be getting all the other vitamins too. So it's just the skin, probably you're gonna get a whole lot more of the vitamin C compared to the inner part of the carrot. But we are not going to throw it away or compost it or I'm not gonna feed it to my chickens today because this is a wonderful food source and we're gonna make two delicious recipes. You are gonna need a blender or a food processor. I have a Tupperware hand crank one or like a pull one. So anything will work. So whatever you got, let's get going. You're gonna need about three cups of your carrot peels. And I never measure, so this is about three cups. <laughs> half a cup of the Parmesan cheese. A half a cup of the toasted walnuts. And I just put them with not any oil, I just put them in my little pan for about three minutes or so. And they just give them a nice little flavor. About a nice pinch or two of unrefined salt. Redmond is my choice. Buy it in bulk. And then a clove or two of fresh crushed garlic. Gotta have the garlic. Won't taste good without the garlic. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on, pull my hand crank. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. So if you guys have your food processor or your blender, you're just gonna blend it up a little bit, mix everything together. Do a little bit more. Now my pesto is gonna be a little thicker than your pesto, 
but it all tastes good. So now here comes the extra virgin olive oil. This is where you have to be a little careful because we're gonna pour it in, and we're gonna pour it in slowly so that you can get the consistency that you want. I'm gonna start with just a little bit. I'm gonna blend it up. Oh, it smells delicious. I'm gonna kind of scrape around the edges. So the one thing when you're making pesto, it's, it's gotta be kind of to your taste. You're gonna adjust it. So you wanna taste it. Do you wanna put more olive oil in it? Do you wanna put more salt in it? Do you wanna put more garlic in it? And you guys decide. Okay, let's check it out. Come on over and let's look at it. This was my off-grid version of my blender, but your one that you do at your house will probably be much smoother, but it tastes exactly the same. Let's see how it tastes. Oh my gosh, I did it right. Perfectly the first time. Normally I have to add something to it. It's really good. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a container, put it in you know, the refrigerator, cold storage. It'll last for quite a few days, you know, maybe four or five days. So I'm gonna use this over some pasta or pizza. Those are like my two favorite ways to use it. But you could use it for if you have appetizers, if you wanna have it out as a dip for people, if you have company coming over, your family, it'd be really good on some crackers, homemade sourdough crackers. All right, so there you go. First recipe for your carrot peels. Love to lick the spatula. All right, the next little recipe we're gonna do with our carrot peels is to make carrot peel chips. And I'm gonna show you one of my seasonings that I like to make um, from scratch and put together that tastes so yummy. So, all you're gonna need is your carrot peels. Put them in a bowl, do as many as you want. See, the good things about these things, you don't need to have an exact recipe. So here's my carrot peels. All you're gonna need is a little dash of extra virgin olive oil. The trick here is you don't wanna to do too much. You'll ruin them and they'll get mushy if you put too much oil. And then, I'm gonna mix it all up. And then I'm gonna show you my, it's called a Jika seasoning. A-J-I-K-A. -A. It's, it's from the country of Georgia. It's a seasoning, it's a Mediterranean seasoning. It's crushed chili peppers, and I grow them here, but, or you can just buy it at the store if you want to. Crushed chili peppers, coriander, coriander seeds, fenugreek, garlic, like garlic powder, and marigold petals ground up. And that's it, and it tastes amazing. So that's what I'm gonna put on this one here. Perfect. I love this Ajika seasoning because it kinda has a little zing to it, but it's not too zingy. All I'm gonna do is put this in here. Now my oven is ready at 350. So I'm gonna put them in at 350. Yummy, yummy. Now what I'm gonna do is I went ahead and just did all that with my Ajika seasoning, but you guys can do whatever seasonings you like. If you like oregano or thyme, or you wanna make it like a curry flavored one, you can do soy sauce. I mean, you could do anything. The possibilities are endless. Another thing I know my grandkids like this one, is I have gotten out maple crumb sugar you can mix with it. Here's coconut sugar you can mix with it because that kind of sweet taste goes really well with your carrots. You could even do a little cinnamon on there. You can maybe put a little sugar with it if you want. Um, and of course, if you just want them plain with a little salt, you could do a little salt. So there's lots of ways to do this. But right now, while this is cooking, it's going to be about 15, 20 minutes or so. I'll come back and check on them because I want them to be a little crunchy. Um, I'm going to go outside and give my poor little chickens a little water because it's very cold today. collecting eggs all day. It's really cold today. Don't want to have those cracked eggs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in a little bit. Come on over. 
know, you guys see the successes and the failures. I have a wood burning cook stove, and what I did was is I put some wood in there and I forgot to turn my oven down, but you guys will keep your oven at 350. So as you can see, some of them burnt. So it went up to 400. That's why it's important to keep it at 350, and then these are perfect. See, these are perfect. Did you guys know that in the 16, 17, and 1800s, chocolate was consumed as a beverage? There was no such thing as a chocolate candy bar. Well, we're bringing chocolate tea back to the 21st century because it's loaded with antioxidants our body loves, and it's a great source of magnesium that's wonderful for bone and heart health. It's a great addition to your coffee machine or your French press or just along with your favorite sweetener. You can find it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com along with our brand new tea infuser. Simple to use for easy steeping. Cheers.